Today, people are more frightened than ever about what's in store for their futures. As the financial markets have lost trillions of dollars in value, and more citizens have lost their homes and jobs, tensions and threats continue to increase among the nations of the world. And as one national leader said, unprecedented natural disasters have brought Americans to the point of fatigue. Millions of confused souls are now learning that their earthly treasures and comforts can't bring them lasting peace. They are watching their castles built on sand being washed away. And now, more than ever, they are looking for something better. They are looking for answers. But who will be there to offer them the one answer they need? Now, Remnant Publications is proud to present a brand new sharing resource that will touch the heart of today's hurting, seeking soul right where they're at. In today's fast-paced culture, the sheer length of the great controversy has often discouraged many souls from plumbing its life-changing truths. Until now, Remnant has taken the greatest faith-building Bible commentary ever written and made it more accessible to today's reader. Beginning with Volume 1, has developed this powerful voice of truth into four shorter, less intimidating volumes with covers that speak to the heart of contemporary truth seekers. Even better, each volume is priced to share on a massive scale, making it easy on your church and personal outreach budget. If you would like to get involved in this urgent effort to share the end time message, you can act now by calling 1-800-423-1319 or by visiting us on the web at www.remnantpublications.com. It's rather ironic in the face of our economic situation with so many layoffs that I'm actually actively looking for workers in my vineyard. That's right. I have a world of searching souls with many walking hopelessly in spiritual circles, looking for direction and finding no one to help them. Where are my sowers and reapers? The harvest is ripe, but the workers are few. I'm telling you that those who sow for my sake, for my kingdom, will reap everlasting life. There is job security when you work for me. Why not get in the employment line? I'm glad that you didn't go away. We're talking about Adam and Eve and how we can make that practical in our lives. And, and that's where sin really started, Pastor. It was with Adam and Eve. And, and just when we left for the break, in verse 6, chapter 3, verse 6 in Genesis, so when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that was a physical, mm -hmm. okay? And it was pleasant to the eyes, mental, and the head, and, and desirable to make one wise. We talk about the pride of life, but the spiritual part. And Jesus had to go through the three same mm -hmm. temptations, physical, mental, and spiritual. And the body says, body, mind, and spirit, or body, mind, and soul. That's what makes a whole being. That's where the devil tempts us. But you know what? Yeah. Jesus has always said that I will never allow a temptation to be greater than what I can give you. Mm. He gives us tools. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, the Bible says that God said it was good that man should not be alone. Yes. And he gave him, uh, the Bible says, a help meet. Um, and as it's been said before, not just to help meet expenses, right. but this is <laughs> somebody right. who would help in a spiritual sense. Yes. They would grow. In fact, uh, Jesus, in the, well, he quotes it in the New Testament uh, and gives his sanction to that marriage covenant that he instituted where he says the two the man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two become one, one. flesh. Yes. That means they're one in purpose. They're there to strengthen one another. That's right. I mean, That's right. And, and that Adam and Eve had that tool at their disposal. You know, the, the Bible says um, that, one will, that, that one will put a thousand to flight with God, yeah. but two ten thousand. That's right. I mean, we, all we have to do is work in addition, and God works in multiplication. So when he had Adam, one could chase... Um, you know, a thousand, but two ten thousand. I mean, you, you right. think of the multiplication and, and, there. And you know, in Proverbs, uh, the threefold cord is not easily broken. It's not easily broken. That's right. So it, it's amazing that they were there to help one another. Help mm -hmm. me, like you said, not to just help meet expenses. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty good. I haven't heard that one before. But um, the biggest battle that we ever face is self. Everyone, mm -hmm. even people that don't believe in God, they know that if they have a fear of climbing a mountain, what do they do? They want to overcome that fear. The, the battle is within, the, within themselves. I've got a, a, a statement that I want to read because um, you have, being a pastor, obviously you work with, with marriage relationships. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I've, I've done marriage counseling and, and, and been around the world, and it doesn't matter what culture um, I, I, I'm, I'm around, the human flesh and the nature is the same. That's right. And, uh, and this is neat. It says here, it says, in, and this is in the book, Patriarchs and Prophets. Um, I love this book, but it's in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 46. Here's what it says. Eve was created from a rib taken from the side of Adam, signifying that she was not to control him as the head, nor to be trampled under his feet as an inferior, but to stand by his side as an mm. equal, to be loved and protected by him. Mm. Amen. Now it goes on. It says, a part of man, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Then, it's, then it says that this is a kicker. It says, she was his second self. Wow. And you know what I've said to my wife? You're always making me upset. Why did you say it that way, honey? Yeah. Well, why did you say it? And you know what? When I really have got on my knees and, say, and, I, and I blame my wife, just like Adam and Eve blamed mm -hmm. each other, I say, what? Lord, why in the world does my wife have to say just those things that, that just trip me off? Why? And you know what I have found out? I found out that the reason is, is because even if my wife was wrong, which many times she's not, I have to say that mm -hmm. right on camera, but even if she was, it's how I relate to what she says because I still got the flesh. That's right. When my wife says something and I'm getting upset, she is really getting down into myself. You know, the only one that got angry was me. She just said words. And that's why we should be on the same team. We're a health meet. We're to balance and to build our characters with one another. And, yeah. and I, I see that that's not happening. You think that, I, I don't know about you, but when I'm sitting with some of these marriage marriages with a husband and wife, it's like they're in World War II. Yeah. They want to blow each other away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have no clue they're supposed to be on the same side. They're telling you all the wrong that the other one is doing. You know, that's interesting because uh, it, it, that's not original with them, with these couples today. When we go to the story here with this very first couple in the Bible, uh, and, and God does come to them in the garden. Yes. He first comes to Adam, which is interesting. He doesn't come to Eve first, even yeah. though Eve is the first one we see taking of the yeah. fruit. He comes to Adam because Adam's, God expected him to be the spiritual leader Absolutely. of that home. Absolutely, that's right. And he comes to Adam and he says, Adam, what happened here? And the first thing Adam does is he what? He, he takes his gun out, <laughs> takes a headshot, <laughs> he and he... <laughs> he blames his wife. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I, when I share with this with people, I say, okay, ladies, here was your opportunity yeah. as a race. To, to prove your superiority to the male race, you know, God comes to Eve and Eve could have made right. Eve yes. could have, you know, God said, okay, Eve, what's your story? What happened here? And she could have said, well, you know what? It was my fault. Uh, she could have owned up. Right. But what does she do? She blames the serpent. So here we start with the blame game. Yeah, that's and right. this is what you're talking about. These marriage yes. couples, we get and talk with them and they're so busy blaming the other. And I've done it myself with, uh, in yeah. my marriage that we, we fail to see that maybe it started with me. Me, that's it. And, and uh, you know, if, if, if we can't get anything more to the viewers today, I mean, it started right in the beginning. It says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And, you know, one of, the, one of the great institutions in the beginning was marriage. God sanctioned that. He, he, he made it holy, a marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. And the devil loves more than anything else to get the husband and the wife separated because he knows when he can take us apart,